Hello learners, welcome to our today's lesson. We are studying cost of capital. This is our second lesson. Remember in our first lesson we only introduced. We defined cost of capital. We say that cost of capital is the price that a company pays for obtaining finance. We say that cost of capital is the price. Remember the topic is cost of capital, cost of capital, cost of capital. We also refer to it as cost of finance, cost of finance or cost of capital. It is the price that a company pays for obtaining capital. And we say that capital can be looked at from two perspectives. That is from the owner's perspective, which we refer to as equity. This is capital brought into the company by the owners who are the shareholders and debt. Debt represents money injected in the company by persons other than the owners. So equity, we say, it can take a form of Ordinary share capital, reserves, retained earnings, share premium, and so on. This debt will involve or include debentures, bonds, long-term loans, and so on. So we looked at the definition, and we also discussed the factors that determine the cost of capital. Today, we want to proceed and uh, determine or calculate, we'll, we want to learn how to calculate the various components, 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 components of cost of capital. How to calculate the components of cost of capital. Remember, capital, the capital structure will involve the equity, as I've just mentioned. We may also have preferred stock or preference, uh, share capital, and debt. Preference stock or preferred stock is a form of um, capital, is a source of capital, equity is a source of capital, debt is a source of capital. So these are components of capital. We need to learn how to calculate the cost of equity, which may be abbreviated as KE, and the cost of preference shares, which you can abbreviate as um, KP and the cost of debt, we can abbreviate it as KD. So we need to learn how to determine or how to calculate cost of each component in the company's capital structure. So in the structure of the company, we may have equity, preference stock, or debt. So in our today's lesson, we'll be looking at the determination or calculation of various components of capital, components of capital. So we start with the equity. Equity. How do you determine the cost of equity? How do you determine the cost of equity? Equity can be determined or can be looked at from two perspectives okay, or can be determined with respect to zero growth firm and constant growth firm. Zero growth firm, zero growth firm, zero growth firms and constant, constant growth 
farms. Now, as the name suggests, a zero growth farm is a farm whose um, dividend per share does not grow. There is zero growth. There is no growth. Okay? The dividend per share year after year does not change. It's zero. So, so that if year one, the dividend per share is, say, 10 shillings per share, then it will be remain the same for year two at 10 shillings per share. There is no growth. It's not growing. It's not growing. It's constantly at zero, zero growth. There is no growth. Then the cost of equity can also be determined for the cost for the constant growth farms. Constant growth farm. This is a farm where the dividend per share is growing at a constant rate. For example, we may talk of 10%. 10% every year. There is a, 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 a constant growth in dividend per share at the rate of 10% every year. So it's constantly growing at the rate of 10%. The first category of farm is where there is zero growth farm. There is no growth at all. There is no growth at all. So what is the cost of equity for a zero growth farm? Now, the cost of equity for a zero growth farm can be determined as follows. KE, which is cost of equity, equal to D1 over, over PO times 100. That is the formula for a, Z, a zero growth farm where, where D1 is equal to the expected, expected dividend per share and PO is the market price per share. Market price per share. The prevailing market price per share. Then we multiply by 100 to get a percentage. So that is how you determine the cost of equity for a zero growth farm. Zero growth farm. That is the formula for a zero growth farm. And it's quite simple because this information is you are given the dividend uh, price per share, expected uh, price per share, and the market price, the prevailing market price per share. If it is um, a listed company, this is the market price at, this, at the exchange. So that is number one. The other category of farm we have said is number two a farm that is growing at a constant growth, uh, constant rate, constant, constant growth farm. So what will be the dividend, what will be the cost of equity for such a farm? The cost of equity will be equal to D1 over P0 plus G plus G times 100, convert that into percent, where D1 is equal to the expected dividend, which may also be equal to D0 times 1 plus G, which we are saying is equal to the expected, expected dividend per share. All right? D1 is the expected dividend per share, expected dividend per share. So the formula for expected dividend per share Depending on the information that you are given, if you are appearing in exams, you may not be 
provided with the expected dividend per share, but you can be provided by the current dividend, okay, where D1 is equal to the current dividend, which is denoted as DO into 1 plus G. So D0 is the current dividend. You multiply by this factor to arrive at D1, which is the expected dividend per share. And P0 is equal to the market price per share. Market price per share. Now, where a firm incurs flotation costs, remember in our introduction, we talked about implicit costs. This is the cost that is incurred in the process of obtaining capital. We talked of brokerage fees, legal fees, uh, auditing fees, and so on. Where we have the flotation costs, or implicit cost, then we'll have an adjustment to this formula. We will deduct the flotation cost from the market price per share. So we have our FC there, where FC is equal to the flotation, flotation cost per share. FC is the flotation cost per share. So in the event that a company incurs flotation cost, then that flotation cost should be deducted from the market price per share. So that is how to determine the cost of equity and KE is the cost of equity. Cost of equity. So this is the formula for the constant growth firm. And of course, G is equal to the growth rate. Growth rate, because remember we are talking about constant growth firm. So if a company is growing at a constant rate, then we'll add G, which is the growth rate. The growth rate, it may be expressed as a percentage. So that's how you determine the cost of equity, which is a component of cost of capital. So that is the formula. Then the formula for equity. We have zero growth firm, constant growth firm. Number B is the cost of preference. Preference share capital. Cost of preference share capital denoted as KP should be equal to um, DP DP over over PD or P naught just have it as P naught times 100, convert that into the into percentage, where, where DP is equal to dividend per share. This DP is a expected dividend per share and P naught is the market price per share for the preferred stock. So then you multiply that by 100. So that is a formula for the preferred stock or the preference share capital. Preference share capital. So that is the second component. That component one is the equity, component two, preference share capital. Equity here or the ordinary share capital. This equity, ordinary share capital. 
ordinary share capital. Then we can look at the third element. The third element is the cost of debt. The cost of debt. The cost of debt or debentures. So the cost of debt or debentures. Remember we said debt represents money brought in by parties other than the owners. Parties other than the owners. Cost of debt or debentures. Now, debenture holders, we say, and again uh, to repeat, we say that debt will involve or include the loans, long-term loans or long-term loans or stock or debentures or bonds. So these bonds, the cost that the company pays, the price that the company pays will be in form of interest. So interest is paid on debt. Thank <music> you.